Well, praise the Lord. We're so glad you chose to join us for another great edition of the Faith Builders broadcast with Philip and Michelle Steele. Such a blessing that you would join us, and we're going to get into some good things from the Word. I've got my preaching buddy with me again today. Amen. And uh, been a while, like we said the last time, since we've done uh, television together. And so we're so excited going going and, and building churches and doing what God wants us to do. And, uh, and I'm in the studio one week and then you'll be there. So good to have you with us. It's good to be here and it's good to have the opportunity to share with you this important truth that God has been uh, stirring in us about the uh, uh, guarding the mind and keeping your attention on the right thing, the God things in your life, what God is doing, what God is saying, what God has planned for you, because that's how God brings into your life uh, his, his design. And the enemy would also like to use the thoughts yeah. to bring wrong design into our life, but we don't have to receive those thoughts and we don't have to give our mental real estate to what the enemy tries to bring for us to meditate on. We can meditate on what God says. Yes, we can. Uh, you know, in the week prior, we talked about the, um, the impact that wrong thoughts had and we were using Judas. You mm -hmm. were talking about how that uh, the Weiss translation says that um, that it, it used the phrase hurled. He hurled it with such force that it stayed. It hurled this thought against Judas with such force that it stayed. And how did the King James say it? It's, it says it entered, it entered into his heart. Supper being ended, it entered into his heart to betray Jesus. It entered into his heart. And yeah. the Weiss says that it was hurled, Satan hurled that thought to betray Jesus yeah. it with, until it stuck. And um, we identified the fact that the, the word devil is not a name. Yeah. The word devil is really a description, description. of how the enemy yeah. operates. Yeah. That, it, that part of the word means to beat consistently with force, with a heavy force until it, there's a piercing, a penetration. Yeah. And uh, that the, the name devil is really describing how he comes with thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts, hurling them against the mind for the purpose of penetrating and getting a road in. Yeah. And another thing that came up in our conversation last week was the fact that um, the Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. I think that's 2 Corinthians 4. Mm -hmm. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. And the word devices means to pave a road. Yeah. In the, it, it gives the description and the definition to, of, of a road being paved into a person's life. Yeah, something that's traveled over and over and over again till it forms a road. And so the enemy wants to bring his wrong thinking, his lies, his deception, yeah. his wrong thoughts until he paves a road into the mind. He's going to beat and hurl those yeah. thoughts against the mind until it penetrates and that inroad is made into that person's life with wrong thoughts. Yeah. And um, you also identified that the God of this world has blinded the minds. Well, we, we ended in, in Genesis yeah. chapter 3, and we were talking about Eve and how the enemy changed her mind, mm -hmm. how he paved a road into right. her mind with these wrong thoughts, very much like the way he did Judas. Right. He got the wrong thinking into her life by that, that um, presentation of wrong words and yeah. she allowed them in. Yeah. You know, one thing I've often said is that she never shows any resistance. None. She there just was no let him resistance. Talk. She just let them, just like, let's have tea. Yeah. Honey, do you want some some <laughs> some cookies with your tea? You want some? Do you need cream in that coffee? You know, she just made him welcome. She just invited him in, let him come in, and you know, there have been times that we've had attack in our in our life, things that d difficult times sure. we were walking through, and you know what we learned to do. I remember you said when you were young. Uh, in the Lord, that you had called your mother, who's a minister of the gospel, and your right. mom said, leave Bibles open all throughout the house. Yeah. Every time you walk through the house, stop and pick up that Bible, read it out loud. Yep. And, you know, throughout our marriage, there have been those difficult times 
we amped up the yeah. voice of the word of God yeah. in our life. We, we made it we, the loudest voice. We, we would turn other things down yeah. and allow the word of God to have more volume in our lives. Yeah. And um, she didn't. Eve no. didn't. Eve just allowed the enemy to talk. And, and n there was not anything that she said um, that was a blockage against what he was saying. She just received it. Yeah. And, and we know that it says that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that word saw is talking about perception. When she perceived it different, her mind changed. Now she has a mind that sees it differently than God sees it. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit. Now, now she's acting in a way she would never have acted before. Yeah. She did eat, gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat, and the eyes of them both were opened. And in my Bible, I marked that word because I looked it up in the original language. It says the eyes of them both were blinded. Yeah. It, it says opened in the King James. But opened the, to something in the natural, but blinded to something in the they spirit. They were blinded to spiritual things. Yeah. And when God came walking in the garden, they hid from God. Yeah. They didn't see things the way Which he saw Which was totally opposite from what they would have done previously yes, because yes. they thought differently. They thought differently. Yeah. So yeah. they had a mind renewal in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They renewed their mind backwards, you know, yeah. downward, a, yeah. away from the spiritual truth. And the believer, the believer has the capacity to renew our mind completely back to the point that yeah. we see it the way God sees yeah. it. That total restoration, to, the total renewal. Yes. And, yeah. and it's our responsibility to do that. Yeah. So somewhere she listened long enough until there was a thought that came with such force that it stayed. Yes, yes. Because up till then, it's, it's kind of like walking by a chocolate pie. <laughs> you know, Have mercy. And, and you walk by it and you're kind of <laughs> like, and you keep going and then you walk back by it. If you stop, now listen, that chocolate I, pie will, will it, it invokes thoughts of if I just had one bite. One bite. And, and just that one bite. Now listen, thoughts are so powerful yeah. that companies will pay millions of dollars to have 30 second spots. To inject thoughts. To inject thoughts uh, during a Super Bowl game because they're, they're gonna, they know how many people they're going to be able to reach. They, and, and, and they're even risking how many of them have got up to go get something out of the refrigerator, to go get another plate of food, to go take their their yeah. break of whatever, and then so, but they're still willing to pay all that money for thirty second of of being able <laughs> to to put thoughts about their product in the in the minds of people. How much more does the enemy yeah. invest years to get thoughts in the minds of children? I heard a minister say one time. He said the enemy is not. He has a devilish wisdom and cunning, but he's not the smartest being in the world, but he's patient. You don't have to know a lot if what you know you have seen work over the course of human history. We see it right here that thoughts cause Adam and Eve to give the world away. To give away the inheritance they had received from God himself. So I, of, I often ask myself this question. If that was the enemy's... Now, this is the book of beginnings. And one rule of biblical interpretation is the law of first mention. And the way you see something played out first is the pathway it goes throughout the word. So what we see here with the enemy is that the, the first time we see him, this is the first time we see him. Yes. He's yes. using thoughts. He's using thoughts that as are his induced weapon. by words. He's saying things that are producing thoughts, so that doesn't change. And you were talking about the Super Bowl. People, uh, the commercials, I should say, people plan for the commercials. 
They say, I can't wait to see what commercials are played during this year's Super Bowl. Yes, they make a big They make a, a big, big focus thing. of it. And the the advertiser knows if I can get my product in their mind, then they walk through the store and they're gonna say, I saw that on the Super Bowl commercial. And they'll try things just because they saw the commercial. Now, we know that's that's elementary and that's how the mind works. That's how the enemy works, right? Has God said, and maybe it's an oversimplification to say that she should, that, you know, well, of course she knew God said. She did know God said, but his words were painting a thought for her that she had never thought of before. Words transmit images. If I want to describe... Thank you, Brother Caps. Yes, thank you, Charles Caps. If I want to describe my car, you may have never seen my car. You, my car could be out in a parking lot full of, of you know, 25, 50 other cars. Yeah. But I could describe my car to you, and if you had the image that my words transmitted to you, you could go find it. Mm-hmm. Because words transmit the image of the person trying to convey a thought, trying to convey that perception to yeah. you. Well, the enemy wants to, he, he did not invent this. Right. He did not come up with this. God invented God this. designed us. Yeah. God invented this yeah. to be for our good. Yeah. And if we will cooperate with God's thoughts and God's words. Because he said, you can think my thoughts. He, he and invited then walk in us my ways. to his thoughts. Yeah. In Isaiah 55, 9, he said, let the wicked forsake their thoughts. Let the unrighteous forsake those unrighteous thoughts. The wicked forsake his ways. And then let my thoughts and my ways take their place, yeah. is what he's saying. He's yeah. inviting us to think his thoughts. This is the key for success. Joshua 1, 8 is talking about success. It yeah. says you'll you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Yeah. And the the pre, the uh, precursor to that is that you're thinking on and meditating on yeah. God's thoughts night and day. Night and day that you're not letting them depart from out from in front of yeah. your eyes. Yeah. You're the Psalms uh, one says that you are like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, yeah. that everything you put your hand to will prosper. Why? Because you are, are delighting in the law of God and meditating in them night and day. And meditate means to mutter. It also means to mentally image. The apostle Paul told Timothy, yeah. if you will meditate upon these things, your profiting will appear to all. Yeah. Thinking on the right things, the God words that he has placed his yeah. thoughts and his words yeah. to transmit the image of his plan for our life, his design. And when we meditate on them, our profiting will appear unto all. Yeah. So the enemy is just trying to use the way God designed us against us. Yeah. And when a person allows the fear that is being propagated in the world, at any time, in the natural, any at any, whatever it is, whether it's a uh, uh, fear uh, during Halloween season when they've got all of the the werewolves and and horror movies, if they allow fear or worry or um, uh, seductive right. thoughts, whatever the case may be, anything that the ingredient isn't a God ingredient. If I allow it to be what I'm feeding on mentally, it's going to change what I see. Well, it, it disrupts your perception. Our pastor, Pastor Caldwell, spent a year at Agape Church before he transitioned over preaching on No More Limits. Wrote a book called No More Limits. Yes. Just republished that Just book, republished. No More Limits. The, 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 the point is that I'm making with, with recounting that was that the whole point of that message was that you begin to see yourself the way I see you and have no more limits. Yes. It was about the mindset. Remo it, 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 and, and he went through things like where the Bible says, if God be for you, 
who can be against you? Yes. That's a limit breaker. If God's for me, who can be against me? Right? Uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Over and over again. He talked about Isaiah 55. Bring your thinking up to my thinking. It's not that you can't think my thoughts. It's as long as you're thinking these thoughts that are down here on a lower level, you can never think my thoughts. And if you don't think his thoughts, Michelle, you can't walk in his ways. Low level thoughts produce low level living. And so if we want to change the way that we live, we've got to have the thought of God to transmit the image of God into our thinking. And, and the enemy knows that. And so he bombards the mind. And I've had people come to me in our years of pastoring and uh, they, they, they would say things like, it's just my mind. I don't know what to do with my mind. These thoughts keep coming to me. Thoughts of failure, thoughts of sickness, thoughts of defeat, thoughts of death. Uh, thoughts that my marriage is going to fall apart, whatever the case may be. And the issue is the enemy is trying to get them to see things a certain way, and then you will follow the direction that you're seeing. You just will. Yes. When, when Eve, there's no indication in the Word that they ever desired to be disobedient to what God said. Right. Until they saw the possibility of being disobedient and the fruit or the reward of being disobedient. Notice what, notice what the enemy said. He said, he said uh, God knows in the day you eat of that tree that you'll become like him, knowing good from evil. See, he painted a picture if you do this, even though it's contrary to what God said, you'll be better off for it. And, oh, by the way, God is doing this to keep you from knowing that. And which, it changed her perception. Which gave an image, a negative image of God. A dishonoring view a dishonor, of God. Dishonor, yes. All of those statements were dishonorable statements. Yes. Has God said, God is keeping something from you, the root of it was rebellion. The root of it was rebellion, and rebellion is rooted in dishonor. If I honor you, I won't rebel against you. What do you have here? Well, the, the, uh, the emphasis that we're seeing then is that the thought, the enemy's going to come, and he's going to bring thoughts, but we don't have to fear. No. We don't have to fear. Jesus gave us an example he was tempted with the thoughts the same way Eve was tempted with thoughts, the same way that the thoughts came against Adam and Eve in the garden. The enemy came to Jesus and he tempted him with thoughts, bringing words that were trying to produce images in Jesus. But Jesus showed us how to combat these thoughts. And he said that we can cast down imaginations. Yeah. He's, Jesus did so with speaking God's word. He answered every thought the enemy brought. He answered. He didn't think it. You can't defeat thoughts pause. with thoughts. He, if, but you do have to resist thoughts. Now, I said Eve didn't show any resistance right. whatsoever. But Jesus did not let one wrong thought go unanswered. Jesus, when, when Satan said, if you're the son of God, Command these stones to be made to bread. Jesus didn't go, uh, hmm. He didn't think about it. No. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, we know those things, but Jesus' ability to stop that statement from becoming a thought and getting embedded into his mind was his ability to answer what the enemy had to say. Eve let the enemy talk too long. She allowed the enemy to talk. She allowed him to, ha it, it was comfortable for him to be there. There wasn't anything that indicated she made it uncomfortable for him. And when, when you set your, the atmosphere of your home with joy, with praising, right. with preaching going on in your home, the enemy is not comfortable not in that comfortable, atmosphere. No. When it, but if you sit around and talk the problem, if, if, if we sit around and, and, and meditate on the negative and feed on the negative and listen to the ne negative and we're opening the door of our house to the, the uh, 
talk of the problem, talk of the hopelessness, talk of the mm -hmm. situation. What we don't have charged in the atmosphere of the home is the word of God, the spirit of God, the hope, the joy, the, yeah. the expressions of God in the home. So what we want to do is we want to have our atmosphere uncomfortable already. Right. But when the thought comes, we need to identify that is not from me. It is not from God. I resist it. And I've got to open my mouth and speak the word to resist right. it. Well, you know, when, when I was growing up, there were certain things that I just would never have been comfortable uh, as far as responses go. I would have never been comfortable in responding certain ways to my mother. No, number one, I knew what she would do. Number two, that was my mother. It never crossed my mind to tell her no. I was never comfortable doing that because that wasn't a thought that came into my mind. You don't tell her no. Right. Because that's your mom. Yes. Right? Especially when you're in their, their home. There are people that get comfortable with going a direction God doesn't want them to go, and it's because that's the atmosphere that they're living in. They have become Mercy. comfortable in an atmosphere that goes contrary to what... If, if someone sits down, for instance, and again, maybe an oversimplification, and they can watch movies that use the Lord's name in vain, they are comfortable in that presence. And that will, that will color their thinking. Yes. That that's yes. okay. Yes. That, that, that it doesn't really matter. When in reality, that's dishonoring to God. It's dishonoring to the things of God. And it started with a thought. It started with a thought. It started with this, this, this atmosphere of comfort. You know, what's so important... <clears throat> as believers, as we've talked, that we're standing up for what we know the Word of God says in every area, whether it be for things that, that we're desiring or it be in areas of morality or whatever it may be, this has to guide our thinking. Yes. This is how we think. I've had people in counseling sessions before say, Pastor, what do you think? And I would get my Bible and say, well, let's find out what I think. Because my thinking has to go in line with God's word. I don't conform this to my thinking. I conform my thinking to this. You know, perhaps you're watching today or listening to this on a podcast or YouTube or however you're viewing it. And number one, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And number two, your mind is racing. There's anxiousness. There's fear. The answer to that is to give Jesus your life. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. So why don't we just do that right now? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe he is raised from the dead and is alive forevermore and I receive him as my Savior in Jesus' name. You know, if you said that simple prayer with me, you're born again. According to Scripture, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things are become new. You're now in a position to begin renewing your mind to the things of God. You've, get, you, you've got to begin to renew your mind. Find a good Bible-believing, word-preaching church. Fill your heart with the Word of God. Fill your mind with what God said, and you'll begin to see a change. Things will turn around. It may not be overnight. But here's what I know. It will occur. God will change your life and your thinking will follow suit. We so appreciate our partners. We so appreciate those that pray for us. Uh, I so appreciate being out in the community. And I was in the grocery store the other day uh, looking for something. And a young man came up to me and asked me if I was Philip Steele. And I said, yes, I am. He said, I watch your program all the time on VTN. Thank you, so, thank you, thank amen. you for so, watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this. Yes. Thank you to VTN. Thank you to Pastor Caldwell and Miss Jeannie uh, for, for providing this platform, this, this network 
that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ over. So we thank you so much for being a part of our ministry, and we're so grateful. And uh, we, we love hearing that, and we hope to see you soon, uh, either in church or in a meeting at some point. In any event, please join us for the next broadcast. We're going to continue this uh, teaching on how thoughts are the gateway into our lives and uh, how we can think God's thoughts and remove the enemy's thoughts. We appreciate you. Until we see you again, please remember to build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. It's been said that the person who wins the mind wins the game. Many believers struggle with the same issues repeatedly, and in many cases, they have struggled for years. Hopelessness begins to set in as they wonder if they will ever be set free. What is the issue? The mind. Pastor Philip still teaches us in this three CD series that the Word of God gives us direction to bring clarity and freedom to us as we understand that we can have perfect mind control. To receive our gift to you, call us at 1-501-400-8797 or online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Take control of your thoughts and begin to live your best life today. This is Pastor Philip Steele, and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church, right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles. If you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.